Welcome to the first episode of The Lab Diaries, where I get to take you with me during a typical or atypical workday in a university research lab. Today was supposed to be pretty straightforward. I just needed to characterize some data using mass spectrometry and NMR, or also known as nuclear magnetic resonance. These techniques are pretty standard in checking to ensure the product you set out to make was actually synthesized. So here I'm just labeling, labeling some Eppendorf tubes to uh, put my compounds in to run a mass spec sample of each of them. As you saw, Jenny in the background was uh, displaying a interesting outfit because she forgot pants today. Um, here I am putting in some formic acid solution to be read by the mass spec. As you can see, I use the same pipette tip. However, because each of the Eppendorf tubes did not have any sample in it, it's okay to do that in case you were wondering if that's not good or practical lab behavior. Um, here I am just mixing up my compound that was in methanol into the formic acid solution that will be put into the mass spec. It's very, very dilute, it's very sensitive. Sadly, the mass spec did not work out today. So I decided why not shoot an NMR because that can't be more complicated. I was wrong. Here, uh, I am basically putting a texture that's very similar to earwax into a teeny tiny glass tube. And uh, then I will be adding a deuterated chloroform solvent to dissolve up my compound so it can be interpreted correctly by the NMR. We use deuterated solvents because if we use regular ones with protons, it would confuse which peaks would actually be our compound versus any solvent in the NMR sample. Um, I was talking to Jenny because again, Jenny still could not get over her ensemble today of a lab coat turned into a skirt. It was hilarious. Um, here I'm just getting distracted and supposed to be putting deuterated chloroform in my samples but uh, I'm not really paying attention to that necessarily. Um, I can't remember what we were talking about here, but again, it probably was her freaking outfit because she forgot pants today. So we took two lab coats and we made them into a skirt and uh, she looked like one of those whirling dervishes from Turkey. Here is our wonderful NMR instrument, uh, props to the Creighton Chemistry Department. And here's a little setup and there's Jenny and well, she didn't have her little skirt on. Anyway, uh, this was after submitting the NMRs. Um, I was taking a look at all of my data and I was getting really frustrated because I thought I had enough sample in my tubes and it turns out I did not because every time I would open up my file, it just showed the peak for the Dure chloroform and then zooming in while I did see signal, it was very hard to determine whether or not that was actually my sample versus noise. And then that also skews the integrations or how many protons per peak based off of that one uh, solvent peak. It can really make something appear to be a lot smaller than it actually is. So I'm gonna have to resubmit those for tomorrow, which just, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of each sample into the tube and hopefully we're good. Um, and then in the afternoon, I decided because my original plan failed, I had a uh, crude product, which is a product that hasn't been purified yet, waiting in the freezer that needed to be purified through flash chromatography. So here I am is double checking to make sure that the spot is still at the same location that it was when I tested this a few weeks ago, just to ensure that it didn't degrade. It didn't, thank goodness, or that would have been really sad. And uh, so this is what TLCing is. You basically uh, spot your product onto a silica plate, and then you have to wait for it to develop in solvent. So it's going pretty slow, but I had it sped up, so it's not as painful. And then after you ensure your spot where it's located, you get to dissolve your sample uh, with any kind of solvent that it dissolves in. Typically I use methanol. Uh, a lot of people I know use dichloromethane because it works just as well. And you just swirl it up real good. And then you can actually add in your silica powder, which will uh, mix in with your compound so it can be put onto a column and we have a purification system called the Biotage which does that for us. 
Uh, this is a technique that was designed first by doing it by hand. Um, however, technology has come a long way, so we get to do it using someone else's brainchild. After you add in your silica gel, what you're gonna end up doing is put your sample on the rotovap. This uh, instrument here is able to evaporate all of your solvent, so you are left with a powder. Um, so here's right after you put it on, you can see there's a bunch of solvent in there. And then over time, that solvent disappears, leaving your solid product, which is very effective, um, especially with uh, just moving forward within science. Uh, it can take a really long time if we didn't have something like a rotovap, which uses vacuum to suck all that stuff out. So it just makes the process go a lot quicker. And after you have your sample that's all mixed in with the silica, what you can do is then transfer it into this little container called a samplet. And here I'm just transferring that into the samplet and ensuring that I have all of my product. So all of the stuff that I made actually gets to go on the column, which then will hopefully increase the likelihood of having a pure product. Uh, here is just more of a side view of our biotage. It's not that pretty. Um, we have it hooked up to an ELSD detector, which is why we have the nitrogen tank. And the ELSD is able to read compounds that are not UV active. So it, like uh, cyclohexylamine, which has no double bonds, that can't be seen just by a UV detector. Uh, but this detector, however, is able to nebulize it and then we're able to actually see that show up on the screen and it makes our life a lot easier when you're working with non-UV uh, compounds. Um, the total price of all of this together, our new Biotage and the ELSD, was I believe a little over $50,000. So it's still a pretty penny, um, but definitely worth it if you are doing a lot of uh, column chromatography. It works great. It's so fast. Here's a little arm coming out and it's dispensing uh, solvent here into our test tubes and then we just get to wait. And then as you can see on the screen, uh, the colors that are coming off, that means that that is UV active and most likely is my product, which um, I'm hoping. I still don't know, which is why I have to test all the colored peaks to just ensure that um, it's the correct molecular weight that it's supposed to be. But it works very fast. I can purify something uh, with just this tiny five gram column in about 15 minutes, which is a lot faster than the one I was originally trained on. And then here is everything sped up. Here is me TLCing. Um, which is taking my fractions from that column and then putting them onto a plate and then uh, seeing whether or not uh, certain fractions correspond to the same spot. And if they have the same spot, then that means that that is your, uh, that compound is the same thing and you can collect all of those fractions and then rotovap all the solvent that was in them. And then hopefully you'll obtain either an oil or a powder in our lab, we really like to get uh, white powders. One, white indicates that they're pure. Two, powders are a lot easier to deal with than oils. Oils can be a pain, uh, especially for removing them from flasks or even just weighing them out. Um, it's always just a lot more convenient to work with powders. So uh, I developed the TLC plate, which was just in a solution of 20% ethyl acetate to hexane. And I'm checking with the little UV light to see where the spots are and they all lined up. So I was able to collect all of the same fractions. Um, and then I'm just rinsing them out with ethyl acetate to ensure that I have everything that's in that tube because sometimes things stick in the tubes. And then towards the afternoon, I always have my cup of tea. So I decided to go upstairs to the biology department because they have these beautiful plants that just love the light. And uh, it's honestly the best view from campus. Um, they have a lot of birds that fly up there that are like the little gnat catchers. And they're fun to watch because they don't really stay still very long. They're constantly moving. Um, and it's just always nice to end the day being able to uh, 
just enjoy what's around you even if you can't necessarily go outside because you work inside you can definitely appreciate nature from inside a building with AC, which I always like to enjoy because everything looks so nice and then you go outside and it's like 90 degrees and humid. Um, and then I went back downstairs, kind of tidied up, and then that was the end of the day, closing the door and then walking home. <laughs>